All right, if you are watching this, it must be May 1st and time for another four way to turn something video. And the topic for May is turn something out of a cube. Now, in just a second, I'm going to show you how I cut this particular block of box elder up into a cube. So I had to take off this little bit from the top here and this from the one side and now I have basically a six by six by six cube and when we get over to the lathe I'll figure out what I'm going to turn with this. I'm not so sure right now. The moisture content is uh, around 16 or 18 percent so I need to get moving on this and uh, yeah let's go find a lathe and start doing a little bit of turning on this beautiful box elder burl cube all right now here is my my blank for my hollow form all right and i'm not sure if there's a better uh, top or a bottom on this i've got some splits right in here which i hope don't go too deep anyway i've got the centers marked what i'm going to do is I'm going to start this between centers and I've got a spur drive here. I've got my biggest spur drive and what I like to do is start by drilling a hole. This and this is going to have to be my my top because I'm making a, a pretty long hole down the center of this. of my pretty pretty workbench here it's okay now the reason I did that I, I used a, a paddle bit and the reason I did that was I can I can uh, drive my spur drive down below the surface of the wood and I can um, make that a little bit safer because if if this spins out of control it's not going to come out of that hole um, now, if you're wondering, this mallet was actually made by a kid in 1992, and that's the reason it's so small. It's uh, not very big for my hand, but anyway, let me let me drive that in a little bit uh, farther, and we'll go over to the lathe, and we'll do a little bit of turning on this. All right, we'll make sure we're locked down really good. Now one thing you can do if you have a spur drive is lock everything down and sort of twist your blank and have that spur drive into the surface of the wood a little bit better. I think that's not going to go any place. All right. Okay, now I have um, my largest bowl gouge here, and I'm going to just round this over. I'm not going to use a spindle roughing gouge because there's a lot of grain going in various directions here, and a lot of what probably is end grain coming up at me here, and that's not when you want to use a spindle roughing gouge. Check my speed here. I'm going about. Uh, 800 RPM. Okay, now I just leveled off this surface here with this uh, particular tool. It's actually a, a homemade tool. I got the steel. It's a 
half inch by half inch high speed steel bar that I ground into a, a really large beading and parting tool. And that worked out pretty well for just leveling that off. So this is going to be my bottom. Anyway, let me uh, do a little bit more work on this. I, I have some cracks in here. There's one right there. I'm not sure how far down these go. Now I've got a split screen here showing you in this camera the horizon and in this camera behind me I'm going to show you the, the cut I'm making with my tool. Okay, and I'm going to try not to get in the way. I've also got a little bit of water sprayed on this just to kind of show you the grain. Yeah, that's going to be really, really nice. Okay. find my uh, my Fibonacci golden mean caliper right there and um, just to review a little bit we got a, a 1 to 1.6 proportion or ratio all right so if this is the 1.6 this is the 1 in in proportion so I'm just gonna line that up here a little bit. I drew a pencil line right in here so this this needs to be my high point of my vessel right in there. Alright, we'll, we'll check that again. Um, you know, I think it's a good guideline but it's not something we need to just uh, adhere to blindly. So let me uh, crank my lathe up again and we'll We'll get turning on this. I'm going to work a little bit more on the bottom right here. Turn my speed up just a little bit more. I'm probably turning about a thousand RPM. Okay, my, my form is a, just a little bit thick right in the center here. I'm going to have to work on that, but I've got some time to, to change that if I want to. I'm looking at the surface and I really don't see any cracks. I think I've uh, eliminated, well there's a crack right there, but uh, so be it. It's a beautiful piece of wood and I'm going to work on the bottom a little bit and I might just go to a smaller smaller gouge 
All right, now I am uh, going to use a half inch bowl gouge to work on this area right down in here. And I've got to start thinking about how I'm going to chuck this up. All right, so I'm going to measure I'm going to measure the bottom of this, what I have right now, right in here. A little over three inches, so I'm going to go find a chuck that might fit that right in here. Okay, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And uh, this particular jaw set here, this is a three inch. Uh, this is from a Nova chuck. Supernova 2, and um, I guess pretty good on this dimension right here on my calipers. Anyway, um, I'm going to make a tenon down here that I can work with. One thing I thought about doing was using a glue block down here, but I think I can get away without having to do that. That's going to be an extra step in here, but uh, let me show you what I'm going to do next here. I'm going to establish a tenon, a compression tenon on this bottom of this piece. And I'm going to temporarily change to a, a spindle gouge. Currently I'm using these uh, quick release collet handles. And they're really nice. I should have done this a long time ago. my caliper here and just uh, double check this so that should be right on there I think that'll be good Going back to my bowl gouge here. Okay, now I've uh, drawn a couple pencil lines right here. Now, this is where my tenon is going to be right in here, okay? And I certainly don't want the base of this to be three inches. I want that to be maybe uh, an inch and a half or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this line down to the center when I get ready to part this off and finish the bottom of this. So I've got uh, this undercut right in here, and all I've got to do is take off this bit of wood right here and continue this curve all the way down to the bottom. And my intention is to use this piece of wood right here, that, uh, that dimension right there, okay? Uh, I, I, I don't want to make this any shorter. I want to keep the length as as uh, intact as I possibly can. So, yeah, I think I'm just about ready to reverse this. I might do a little bit more work on the outside. I'll uh, reverse this and we'll do a little bit of hollowing.
Okay. Um, I'm still a little bit fat looking, but we'll work on that as we go along. I'm going to measure this. Maybe. So I started out with a, a 6 by 6 cube. Okay. This ruler is 6 inches. And I'm going down to the very bottom of my tenon. And I've actually lost only about a half an inch of my height. All right, which isn't too bad, and I'm not sure. I'm probably down to five inches here. Um, I actually like the shape, so you know, may, we may just keep it a little bit on the fat side. That's all right. So I've got that trued up. I need to mention one more thing. I changed from the three inch jaws to these uh, Vicmark two inch jaws. Uh, clothes, they're about two and a quarter or so. They're really hefty. They're just fine for um, for turning a hollow form. And uh, yeah, they'll work just fine. So I'm going to get set up and do a little hollowing. First thing I need to do is drill out the center of my vessel. Establish a, a depth. drill here. This is a, a quarter inch drill. It's a little bit longer. I've got a handle on it. And I'm going to just uh, mark the approximate bottom dimension of my vessel with a piece of tape right there. Now I'm probably going to put a Jacob's chuck in my tailstock and drill that out a little bit wider. But for right now, I'm going to just go down with this drill. I've got my lathe speed turned down to about 450 or so. Don't need to be turning very fast when I'm doing this. Because these drills can get out of control and that's not a good thing. I have a drill someplace that's about a half an inch and it's way too big for this operation. So I'm, I'm right there. Double check that, that's good. Okay. Okay, now what I have checked up here in my tailstock is a dedicated drill. I've got an old Jacobs chuck here. Actually, it's a, a keyed chuck inch and a quarter Forstner bit. I've got that marked on my tape right here. I'm going to drill this out a little bit more. And then we can hollow. Turn the speed down just a, a little bit. Alright, and there we go little screeching to get this out of the way. Yeah, very good. Now we can uh, turn our attention to hollowing this. Okay, now that was the easy part. And I really, really enjoy working on the outside of a hollow form like this. It's just fun to shape that. I'm uh, not quite uh, to the point where I like it on the bottom, but we can work on that later on. Um, it's all about what I show you. And I could spend half hour, 45 minutes, uh, hollowing this out. Now I'll do some hollowing, but you can't see it, okay? So I'm gonna concentrate more on some of the high points from here on out, establishing the dimension of the opening on the top of the vessel, the bottom dimension, the whole shape. I'll show you some hollowing tools I use and some techniques I, I use for approaching a hollow form. This one isn't very big. I have a couple options that uh, 
might interest you, but uh, this is going to be a really, really pretty piece. When I get done with it, I can take no credit for the beauty of the wood, but it's going to be really nice. Now, what I ordinarily do with a vessel like this is I will uh, put an insert in this. You can't thread box elder, but uh, I ordinarily put an insert in there and thread a lid into this. I'm not going to do that. I might make it so I can add that later on after this project is completed. So I'm going to put this away till tomorrow. It is April 2nd. So what I want to do is I want to get this hollowed out so it can do some drying. All right, it's still a little bit wet, you know, probably 16, 18 percent. I'll check that. But anyway, let me uh, let me put this away in some shavings and uh, we'll bring it out tomorrow and I'll show you some hollowing. OK, I'm ready to do a little bit of hollowing. Let me show you what I'm going to use initially. I have a Trent Bosch tool. This is a 5 8 inch bar in a Trent Bosch handle. And the cutter is just a steel cutter, which really is my favorite. I'm not a big fan of carbide uh, hollowing tools, although I have them and I do use them. Sometimes they can be just a little bit aggressive. Anyway, this is what I'm going to initially start out with. I'm going to hog out uh, a lot of the inside here and uh, probably not show you a lot of that because it's, uh, well, it's the boring part. And you can't see it anyway. And I'm going to be turning around five or 600 RPM. Not real fast, it's not necessary. Turn the speed up just a little bit more. I'm probably going 600. Now I could show you a very long video just showing the hollowing process. So I'm trying to hit the high points here and some of the major tools I use. This isn't a very big hollow form. It's only five and a half or six inches deep. So I can kind of show you what I do to approach something like this and uh, leave some links in the description on other hollowing videos. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to use a couple different measuring devices as I move along here. Let me show you uh, something you can make very easily. This is uh, some 3 16 inch diameter. What would that be? Three or four millimeters? Anyway, it's some uh, wire you can get from your hardware store. I probably got this from Ace Hardware. And I've got a straight leg here, and I've got a curved round section here. And uh, let me bring you in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, now this little thickness gauge is very easily adjusted. I have this at about an inch right here. Okay, it's way thicker than I need to have it. So I just put that in here and you can see right here that I'm well under an inch right along the opening. If I go back further, I'm going to I'm going to touch right in here. So what I'm going to do is probably go down halfway with this measurement and then I will start thinning that out to a final dimension. I've got to keep in mind this wood is still wet. Okay, what you're looking at here is, it's called an Andre Martel caliper, and it's got different um, dimensions or radius, is that radii, <laughs> on the different legs. So you can pick one that's best for your particular vessel, whether you're doing a bowl or a hollow form. And we might just go right here. And then if you look at the the back side here, that's the depth of that or the thickness, which is really thick. 
okay? But I've, I've probably taken out 60% of the volume of my vessel. Now I need to start here at the top and make that a final thickness going back into my vessel. And I'm going to continue using the same tool I started with. All right, now as I work my way down here, I'm going to need a different uh, dimension set on the opening of my my thickness gauge. And I'm going to just kind of eyeball that. That's probably 5 eighths of an inch, but that's kind of where I want to be. Okay, now I'm going to show you just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, here. This is another tool that I use initially to get down around this bend right here. This is a, I think it's a hunter tool. It's a carbide tool and it's a bent tool. I don't love bent tools all that much. If I can reach an area with a straight tool, I'm going to use a straight tool. They're a little bit easier. And you don't get in quite so much trouble with a straight tool. Take a look at this. All right, that feels pretty good, but what's that mean? Okay, so there's my opening, and I am less than that. I'm probably a half an inch right in here. I'm going to continue working on that and get her close to my final thickness, and then I'm going to show you another tool I ordinarily use on a vessel that's this size. And you can certainly look at a lot of my hollowing videos if you want to go into more detail on some of the tools and techniques I use. I've got a lot of hollowing videos. Bye. Mm -hmm. I okay, you're on. You're on camera here. Okay, now there is really no better technique than. Just looking inside this vessel with a flashlight kind of gives you an idea what you're doing. And uh, I'm probably a good inch thick most of the way. Here's what this looks like inside. That solid line is where I'm at. And I probably have the most wood down here to take off at the very base of this. The dotted line is where I'm going for, what I'm aiming for, okay? So, you know, like three-eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch around there. And if I were to dye this from the inside, which I sometimes do, I'd need that about a quarter of an inch. I've also got the outside of this covered in shellac just to kind of slow the drying down. I don't mind if it dries from the inside. I don't see any cracks. I think I've taken care of all the cracks. So from here on, I've got to be really careful Okay, now, my thickness is okay right down to this pencil line right here. And what I'm going to show you now and what I'm going to use right now is this particular tool with an outrigger on it. It's a scraping tool. It's got a little spring right here, which you adjust for the thickness. Okay, and I've got this adjusted probably three-fourths of an inch. It's thicker than, I, than I'm uh, intending for the final thickness to be. So I've got the tool rest banjo reversed so I can use this on this side of the 
um, the tool rest. I'm going to turn the lathe in reverse when I do this. This tool is designed to be turning the lathe in reverse. Okay. And I, I just want to get it down to around here to the final thickness and I'll go back and forth and adjust my, my little spring right here. Okay, now I brought you in a little closer and I'm going to try to stay out of your way here. Um, right, right in here, I'm uh, someplace, right in here my spring is, is uh, not touching the wood. Okay, but as I go down there, it is. I'm, I'm too thick from here down, so let me turn my lathe on. I got to remember to turn this in reverse. So right here, my spring is not touching. And now I don't want to go down any, any thinner right there at this time. remembered something that this American Beauty lathe has as an accessory. This is an off switch. I've got it covered with a plastic baggie, not to get it all full of shavings, but what I can do, I can simply step on this and it turns this off. And right now, I need another hand or a foot. So I'll put that down there at the base of my lathe. And I got a lot of shavings to take out. And I think I'll I think I'll get my my handy dandy caliper thickness gauge and I'm 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 okay down to about here. But let me continue down here. Let me work on that. Uh, I'm getting there. I don't want to make this too thin. Um, this is an important project. All right. All right. Now this is a really fun tool to use. Um, I bought this years ago from Dave Schweitzer. This is a D-Way tool. And I, I assume they still have them. But at the time, this was the only one they had available. This is the one that um, is used when the lathe is turning in reverse. It's got a steel cutter that you can take out and, and sharpen, which I think I probably need to sharpen it. Let me go down a little bit farther. You can't see this anyway, so I'm, I'm pretty good right, right, to, right here in this area. Okay. with my foot.
Okay, I'm just working my way around the outside of my vessel with a negative rake scraper. Just cleaning that up. I had applied a coat of shellac um, over the last couple days. I've been uh, working on the inside of this. So I'm just taking off all the remnants of that old shellac. And I'm just about ready to reverse this and deal with the foot. And I'll show you that. So just a little bit more work on the outside here. I'm turning about 800 RPM. And you can probably tell that my vessel has gone a little bit out of true, warped just a little bit. Um, it's still pretty wet and I need to uh, complete this part of it and let it dry a little bit more and then we'll move on to the foot. Okay, it is time to reverse chuck my, my hollow form. Let me show you um, the way I'm going to do this. I've got a threaded rod. I've got an end piece with a little bit of foam on the very tip of this that will uh, connect to the very bottom of my hollow form, impinge on the bottom. That's one point that's very important. And then I've got this this little block of wood. It's a, it's a cone that will <laughs> go up against the uh, recess in the opening of my vessel. And then I've got a lock collar right here. So I'm going to bring my tail center up. Uh, I need another hand. And I'm using the same tail center mark that I used to start this vessel and that should run true and it does. So now I'm going to bring up this, this stop collar. Okay, it's got a little Allen bolt in there. Or screw. So I'm going to lock that down. Okay. A little bit more pressure on the tail center. And this is what's going to drive my piece. So let's turn the speed down and see how that works. It's really running true. So that's, that's good. Now let me point out one more thing. If you can see this pencil line right here that is the bottom of the inside of my vessel right there and from here let me draw a line around this there from here down it's a little bit thick and I left that thick on purpose I can undercut the bottom part of my vessel and sort of lighten it up just a little bit and that's what I'm going to do right now all right, now I'm going to start with a half inch bowl gouge. Work my way around down here. One thing I don't do, I just don't like to do it, is part this off. I want to maintain this center point down here until I'm all done with this. So I'm going to start taking off all this garbage down here, this tenon in this area right here. And I don't need to be turning extremely fast. Let's just check here. Uh, it's about 700 RPM. Need a little bit more pressure there. And a little bit more speed. Alright, 
I drew that pencil line again right there, so that is the bottom of the inside of my vessel. I'm going to take off a little bit more wood right in this area, but I'll have a good half an inch at the bottom of my vessel. This is a, a spindle turning, and it can be weak on the bottom here, so I'm going to uh, work my way down here, and then I'm going to come back here and take a little bit more wood off this area because it's still a little bit thick in there, and I want the wall thickness more even. Well, I'm really happy with the shape. Um, my wife looked at this and she said, yeah, it's a little squatty. Well, um, I tried to undercut this area down here a little bit and lighten that up. I like it. So I'm gonna put an oil finish on this. I think that'll be maybe the simplest um, approach to this piece. I've got some sanding to do, which I will save you from. Um, yeah, and I'll show you the finished hollow form out of a cube. Yeah, that, that turned out okay. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, and I'll show you the final result. Thank you very much for watching, and remember to watch Tomislav, Richard, and Mike's entry into this uh, uh, May 1st four ways to turn a cube. Thank you very much, and please subscribe to all of us. Okay, that means a lot, and uh, I'll talk to you in June. We'll see you uh, again, and I have no idea what we're gonna turn in June, but there we go.